All right, in this video, we're gonna cover the creation of a very simple, very basic sofa. So kind of like a couch. Now, we're gonna start pretty much how we did last time with our bookshelf. I really like working with, with a box. I feel like when you're modeling, the box tends to be one of the easiest and best tools for creating complex objects. So my top view, I'm basically gonna click and drag and draw the basic shape for my sofa. Now it looks like I still have some settings left over from when I did the bookshelf, no problem. Remember, we're gonna come over here to our modifier tab and modify it. I certainly don't need five height settings. In fact, I wanna keep it like this for right now. We're gonna change it though, don't worry. So this is going to be a couch or sofa. Now, this is by no means the only or even maybe the best way of modeling a sofa, but it should teach you a bunch of fun tools and kind of get you to be thinking about how to create other 3D models. So this piece that I've created, you're probably looking at and going, well, it doesn't look like much like a sofa. Um, that's right. But this is actually the piece on the bottom of the sofa. So the base, basically. Underneath this would be where the feet would be. Above it would be probably a larger area where the cushions go or the back and the arms and everything come out of. This is, again, most sofas have that kind of spare sofas anyway, have kind of that box-like base area. Some are thicker, some are smaller. All sofas are different. So, you know, for this, I'm not really that worried about my dimensions, except for I don't want it to be too deep and I don't want it to be too long because it might look funky and unrealistic. Not that it's going to be overly realistic, but it will give have a nice mid-century modern kind of vibe. All right, so for this, I want my width, length, and height segments to be set to one. I want to make sure the edge to faces is turned on up here if it's not, so I can see all these great lines. Otherwise, it's going to be really difficult to be modeling this. And then we are ready to convert this to editable poly. So like before, I could go to my modifier tab and go to edit poly, or I can right click and do convert to edit poly. In the last video, I kind of mentioned that when we right click it, it's like you know, uh, flattening all the layers in Photoshop. So I can never go back to that box a minute ago. Well, that's not true. I, right now I can hit Control Z, but soon I'll never be able to go back. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna be editing this shape by cutting some more lines in it. Now, instead of just adding more lines at the primitive level, I'm gonna cut them in by hand because I don't wanna just have them be perfectly in the middle. I want them in very specific spots to create some very specific pieces of geometry for my couch. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and go to edges and I'm gonna select all the edges through the middle. There are a bunch of different ways to do this. One way I could do, especially if I was turned it a little bit, is I can click and drag through the middle. So in the last video I said don't click and drag because we don't want to select all of them. This time I do want to select all of them. So clicking and dragging works perfect. Um, so I'm gonna click and drag and click all those, but that's not the only way to select them. I can also just click one of them and come over here to these tools. Ring will select all of them one way and loop will select them the other. So if I did ring, for example, you can see there's all the ones I need selected, also all selected. If I click it and click loop, Looks like it's not doing much right now because it doesn't see it as an edge loop, but that will select all of the edges that are connected in a loop. So we want ring for this, and I basically don't want the end selected. I want all the parts through the middle. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut a couple of different pieces into this. Um, we, we're gonna cut where the arms for the sofa are gonna go and where the back of the sofa is gonna go. Okay, so that's gonna be what we're looking at. And it doesn't really matter necessarily which order we do this in, right? So I'm gonna select all these guys and I'm gonna come down to connect. Now, again, just like before, there's a large button that says connect and there's a small menu. For this, we're gonna need the menu. If I just click the button, if you have all the default values, connect will just put a cut right down the middle. I don't want that. I want it in specific places. So I'm gonna click the little settings box. Now you can kind of see the red's a little hard to see on the purple. Let's do this. Let me hit cancel. Let me hit the little X here. And I'm going to change this from purple to a different color that maybe it'll be a little easier to see on. Okay. Now you can, there's a little colored square up here. You can change the default object color to whatever, you know, works best for you. So I'm going to select all these again and then click the little box next to connect. And you can see now a little bit 
better the red line. Now I'm gonna do two for this, but I don't want them there. I'm gonna move them. So I'm actually gonna adjust these settings. There are pinch and slide. Slide will move both lines together. Pinch will move them farther or closer together. So for this, I want pinch, and I'm going to just push them out and eyeball it to about how big I want my arms on my sofa. So I'm happy with that, I'm gonna hit OK. Now if I click off of it, you can see here are the edges we've cut in. And notice they're very much more specific than they would have been otherwise. Now for this one, we're gonna do kind of the same thing the other direction. So I'm gonna go and click this one, scroll up here, click ring, grab all of them, okay? And then we're going to come down to connect again. Now, I don't want to leave the settings the way they are because first of all, I don't need another like line like that. For this, I only need one segment. And now pinch doesn't do anything without more than one line. So notice it went right back to the middle because it can't relate its pitch to anything. So you could set this back to zero if you want or you could leave it, doesn't matter. It's not gonna affect one cut. But I'm gonna slide this time and I'm gonna slide it back. Now. If I wanted to, I could probably figure out the exact width here if I wanted this to match. But even in real life, the sofas don't always match like that. You know, I've seen plenty of sofas that look like that. This is going to basically be the back of the sofa. So we're going to pick whatever size we're happy with and hit OK. Now you can see we've made the cuts. Now we still have a box, but we have a box with very specific lines and we don't have more geometry than we need. You know, that's one thing if you're creating assets for games, that's super important. Even as um, game engines are able to handle millions and millions of polygons, the truth is you don't need to ever make an object more complicated than it has to be. Now, what the definition of has to be is can change over time, but that's always gonna be true because adding complexity just for complexity's sake does nothing but make it harder on your computer to render. So uh, having more and more draw calls to your graphics card when you're trying to render out your scene. And when we're rendering a game, we want it to run at something like 60 frames per second so that way it runs smooth and works right. All right, so I'm a little long-winded, sorry about that. All right, so I'm gonna go to Polygon now and just like before, I'm gonna click there. I'm gonna hold Control and basically I'm gonna click this C we've created. Now, you can either do this separate or together. I'm gonna do both just so you can see kind of the difference. This is one of those things where as we start modeling this sofa, depending on what kind of sofa it is, it's going to be made differently. So I could either go to extrude and extrude them all together. You know, Again, kind of getting that sofa-like shape right now. Or I could do them separate. Together is gonna to give me one nice unified C-like shape. And if I wanted to then, I can hold down Alt and deselect these. And I could go back to the back of the sofa and even pull it up a little bit. Again, kind of has a bench vibe right now, but we can create any kind of sofa we want, you know? So if we like that, great. If we don't, we can keep tinkering with it. If we want to keep this shape, we could work with some of the other tools to kind of make it look a little bit more comfortable. So I could even grab just these edges here, perhaps. And I don't want to extrude those because that would be crazy looking. But um, I could do something like maybe chamfer them a little bit. And instead of using all the options on chamfer, I'm just going to click the button so you can see what it does. So I could chamfer out the edges a little bit. Oops, looks like my trackpad freaked out. Undo, control Z. Sorry, I'm not doing, I'm doing this without a mouse, so. Looks pretty good. So here, almost looks like kind of like the Simpsons couch, right? I could go back in that middle edge there, pull it out a bit, and it would look even more round than it does, right? But that's up to you. At this point, we're getting to the point where you can fiddle with this as much as you like. If you wanted to round these out, we could. We could again use that same chamfer tool to kind of add some roundness. I could even add another fun modifier. There's a really fun modifier in here called like Turbo Smooth, which you could use to kind of add some complexity to the shape. Well, I don't really like how I love what it did in the middle there. Um, 
I can kind of play with this a little bit. Uh, I haven't really set the smoothing groups properly, but we can kind of play around. I don't really want to do that right now. All right, so you can see here we go. If I want to go back, I'm going to hit Control Z just a couple of times. To back where we started. Now, the reason why I'm going back is I want to show you a couple of options, right? Right there, I was selecting the entire C, but I can also just grab just the arms. I rather kind of like the uh, quirkiness of this style. So if I grab the arms and pull it up, and then I can grab that back edge. One, two, three. I want to grab them all together. Um, again, we can always rotate around to make sure I don't have something else selected. And I could pull it up. Now, notice it pretty much looks the same as it did before, right? But the big difference is it is not connected to the arms. So if you wanted to connect it, you could. If I pull it back now, you can really see it, right? The arms are a separate piece. Just depends on what you're trying to make, what kind of sofa, what kind of style you want to go with. So if you want them all together, you'll just want to grab all of that C-shape and extrude it together. So we could leave it like that. I've seen that sofa. Or we could turn that off and pull it up. Or we could even turn this off and pull up only the middle. I can honestly say I think I've seen all of those shapes in sofa designs. All right, so now we just need to add a couple of pillows on this thing, and it should be pretty much good to go. We're going to go back to our standard primitives here, and I'm going to pick um, – I could pick box and add in some with box, but I actually want to show you um, some other objects we can play with too. Underneath this drop down menu, the next one down is extended primitives. So when you get bored of working with the standard ones, there are extended ones. And extended ones have some extra cool things in there, like this one, which is chamfer box. Now for this, I'm going to go ahead and go to my top view because I think it's going to make my, my job just so much easier, being able to line it up a little bit it up and then the last kick click is actually how much chamfer you want now because it's a primitive object just like the other one was we can modify it more after the fact so you can see here we've added that cushion pull it up a bit or we can even hold down shift we'll actually make a copy of it we'll pull it over and make a copy I'm holding shift right now and dragging it over we can even do two what's cool about this is I can make them instances and then if I change one it'll change the other so now you can see doesn't look like three really fit in there right they're just a little big so we could do something like play with the width because they're instances it's the same cushion three times so when I change one the other two change as well so we can see here, it looks like I might be able to get away with making them a little bit bigger. In the settings. Yeah. Now, the aligning these might take a minute, but you know, really, honestly, the non-uniformity almost makes it more real, right? So you can see there we created some cushions. Now if I wanted to, I could do the same thing with the chamfer box and create some for the back. So maybe if we wanted to do that real fast. You know, again, we'll do chamfer box and this view here. And maybe we'll just do two. So we'll do something like that. And then we'll just move it back. I'll again hold shift and drag it over. Make a, make a copy of it. Looks like I'm going to keep instance because it kind of is a little bit too long. So we'll just pull that in a little bit until we're happy. All right. Uh, maybe I'm bump it up a little bit. So again, trying to get that alignment just right, trying to get that size just right. If we're kind of not really working with dimensions, we're just kind of playing in there. Um, but you can fiddle with it to you're happy with how the sofa looks. All right, that's going to do it. I'm going to pretty much call this done. And I can't wait to see what kind of sofas everybody makes.